The first question reads, a gas occupies 12.3 liters at a pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. What is the volume when the pressure is increased to 60 millimeters of mercury? The first thing you should do is identify your variables. 12.3 liters is a unit of volume. 40 millimeters of mercury, a unit of pressure, and 60 millimeters of mercury, also a unit of pressure. With two units of pressure and one of volume, but no mention of temperature or of moles, you know you're dealing with Boyle's law. P1V1 equals P2V2. The relationship between pressure and volume, remember, is inversely proportional. So if the pressure is increasing, we're expecting a decrease in the volume. I'm trying to solve for V2. So the first thing I want to do is isolate V2. Now it's a matter of plugging in some numbers. V2 is equal to 40 millimeters of mercury times 12.3 liters divided by 60 millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury will cancel out, leaving with the units of just liters, and V2 works out to 8.2 liters, which, as predicted, is a smaller volume than what we started with. The second question reads, 600 millimeters of air, milliliters of air is at 20 Celsius. What is the volume at 60 Celsius? Again, I want to label my variables. V1, T1, and T2. Here with two units of temperature and one of volume, I know I'm dealing with Charles's law. Charles's law states that volume and temperature are directly proportional, so as I increase the temperature, I would expect an increase in volume as well. Remember, temperatures need to be converted to Kelvin in order to use Charles's law. Just as before, I'd like to isolate my variable, I'm trying to solve for V2. and then plug in some numbers. V2 is equal to 600 milliliters times 60 degrees Celsius plus 273 divided by 20 degrees Celsius plus 273. My temperatures cancel, leaving with just a unit of volume, and that comes out to 682 milliliters. Problem three reads, determine the pressure change when a constant volume of gas at one atmosphere is heated from 20 Celsius to 30 Celsius. I'm told the constant, the volume is constant. I'm given an initial pressure, an initial temperature, and a final temperature. Constant volume, changing pressure, changing temperature, that's Gay-Lussac's law, where P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Just like with Charles's law, Pressure and temperature here are shown to be directly proportional. So if I have an increase in temperature, I'm going to estimate there will be a corresponding increase in pressure. I'm trying to look for a final pressure, so I'm going to isolate P2 as a variable. And then plug in some numbers. P2 is equal to my initial pressure times the final temperature. 30 degrees Celsius plus 273 divided by the initial temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius, but converted to Kelvin plus 273. Units of temperature cancel, leaving with just a unit of pressure, and works out to 1.3, 1.03 atmospheres, which, as predicted with an increase in temperature, is also an increase in pressure. The final question reads, 3.75 moles of a gas occupy a volume of 8.2 liters. If 0.55 moles of gas are added to the container, what will the new volume be? I have an initial number of moles and an initial volume. Here I'm not actually given a final number of moles, I'm given a change in the number of moles, but that will allow me to solve for N2. N2 in this case would be my initial number of moles plus the moles that I add, which is going to work out to 4.30 moles. Looking at N1, N2, and V1, I know this is going to be an Avogadro's law problem. Avogadro's law states that the number of moles of a gas and the volume of that gas are directly proportional. So if I'm increasing the number of moles, I would expect an increase in the volume of the gas. Just as with the previous three problems, I want to isolate the variable. 
Here I'm solving for a new, vari uh, new volume, so we'll get V2 by itself. Go through and plug in some numbers. V2 is equal to my initial volume, 8.2 liters. My final number of moles, 4.30 moles. And the initial number of moles, 3.75 moles. Moles will cancel out, leaving me just a unit of liters, which is a good unit of volume. And I'll find that V2 is equal to 9.4 liters. Notice that in all four problems, I followed the same pattern. I identified my variables, used those variables to help determine what equation I was looking at, made a prediction based on the relationship between the variables as to whether my answer should be bigger or smaller, greater than or less than the initial uh, condition, isolated the variable I wanted to solve for, plugged in some numbers, and then solved. Notice as well that writing out all of the equations, writing out the numbers and including units, was helpful in keeping the work organized.